Well, good afternoon. Welcome to a, another episode, episode eight, I believe, of Green Journal Entries. Today, today is a beautiful day out here in Central Texas. Not in the hundreds anymore. We are about the mid 90s. So it's about maybe 94, 95, 96, around that. But we have a nice breeze going through, so it makes it feel a lot cooler than what it uh, what it usually is. Uh, last month in July, I mean, it was burning hot. We were in the hundreds at least every day of the month. So a lot cooler today. Glad to be filming today. It's been a while. Um, so let me tell you what. I was out in my garden today just looking around as I do every day, and uh, I noticed something. And I had to do something about it. And it really, really made me think like, wow, no wonder this was going on. No wonder I seen these things. And I had to do something about it quick. And I said, you know what, it'd be a perfect opportunity. I should go ahead and make a video to, uh, to show the experience. And maybe you can gain from it and, you know, possibly learn something from it you know what I mean so stay tuned and I'm gonna show you what I found out so this is it this is my Cordy Line Fruticosa, and if you haven't been following my uh, previous episodes, this plant I was about to throw away. This was in, I would say, May, either May or April, or even the early parts of June. No, that's a little too. It was getting really hot outside, and this plant was pretty much dying it was down to it was down to this right here this was pretty much the plant uh, out of these that's what it looked like it was this here and and uh, so I was gonna throw it away but I decided to go ahead and keep it and water it and see if I could bring it back to life and as you see it did so over the past few months, this is what it's been growing into, a beautiful plant. But over the past few weeks, the growth has slowed down. The tips of these, I don't know if you can see, here's a good one. The tips of these started to turn brown. And I was trying to figure out why. Well, why is it turning brown? And so... And so I looked at it this morning. Well, actually, I looked at this a few weeks ago. This is a baby quarter line right here sprouting out from this old, uh, old, uh, old branch here. It sprouted out, and I was, you know, so happy. But then I started figuring, you know, why are there spots on here? Why is there spots on this plant, you know? It, it's growing so good. What's going on? And I just couldn't figure it out. So I just kept, gave it some more water and fed it until this morning I got a really close up view of what's going on. And let me bring you in to show you what I'm talking about. So I don't know if you guys will be able to see this, but besides the dust that's on it, because I am, there is construction going on across the street, but besides the dust going on under it, on this if you flip over this leaf you could see spider webs as for that uh, lapse in video so look if you look I don't know if my phone will be able to pick this up my camera but if you look really closely if it zooms in do you see those bugs you see it moving yeah those are spider mites 
Absolutely. And they're not just on this leaf, but they're on this leaf. And they're on this leaf. And actually, they're on the entire plant. The entire plant. So, what does that mean? Well, that means that they are trying to colonize this plant. They are wanting to suck the nutrients out of this plant and kill it. And that's what they do. That's what spider mites do. They literally damage the cells of the plant and suck out the water from the plant. I actually had this happen to my purple passion. No, I'm sorry, my Persian shield. And it was infected by spider mites and they sucked the life out of that plant. And I don't want them to do it to this one because this one was a project plant and I brought it back from the dead already and I'm not trying to do it again. So, let me put you back up here and I'm going to show you what we're going to do. So like I said, they are all over this plant. Completely in every corner, in every little divot, underneath the leaves, on top of the leaves, inside the crevices. The entire plant is pretty much infiltrated with spider mites. And spider mites, they come about because they like hot dry environments well this is the perfect environment for spider mites because here in central texas over the last few months it's just been hot and dry perfect environment for them to uh to colonize and reproduce at alarming rates so when you see spider mites on your plants it's time to immediately take action immediately because it's really a ticking time bomb for your plant because it's just a matter of time before it's just completely dead. So this is what I did. And I'll show you. Let me take you back out. And I'll show you what we're going to do with the plant. Okay. So now that we know what's going on with the plant. There's a few things that I could do. That you could do. Um, the first thing is. You could use a mild detergent. Um some warm soap and water unscented and you could spray your plant down with that uh, you could use rosemary oil you could use a um, it's called cinnamite and that's pretty much cinnamon oil and you can use all these different type of oils but the one oil that everybody knows of that really is effective is uh, neem oil and that's what I'm going to do I'm going to pretty much hose this down with neem oil um, this is super concentrate I got it from my local nursery for um, about uh, 1899 um, it was 1850 um, prior military and I live in a military town so I got the military discount which really truly means I just got the taxes taken off of it so it came out to be 1850 for a uh, for 16 ounces of this stuff but like I said it's super concentrate one tablespoon per five gallon uh, for one gallon I'm sorry and uh, we're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna attack this because I love this plant I think it's very beautiful especially when you brought it back from the dead I want to uh, I want to keep it and eventually it's gonna go in the house when it starts getting cold anyway so let me show you how to do this so the first thing that you want to do is let's hose down the plant. Let's completely wash it off full of uh, with just regular old tap water um, and just kind of spray it down. We're going to remove the spider webs. We're going to remove, we're going to blast off any spider mites or any other pests that are on there. We're going to blast them off, blast their homes off and uh, get those eggs off too. So let me do that and I'll come, come right back and uh, we'll move on from there. After going ahead and vigorously wiping the leaves off with the water, um, don't forget to make sure you get underneath the leaf. As you can see, they already did a pretty good job at destroying some of these leaves on the underside. You don't want to forget that. Uh, a lot of people think it's just the top of the leaves. They really attack underneath the leaf. That's where spider mites get, um, that's where actually the leaf is the weakest, underneath it. And uh, so make sure you spray underneath the leaf. 
Now, you're supposed you're supposed to apply the neem oil on a dry plant. You could let this dry, or in my case, because it's not that many leaves and I don't have very much to do today, I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna dry each leaf off, just like that. And if it's a smaller plant, you could dry the leaves off because um, because obviously there's not that many leaves. So I'm just gonna just go through and just kind of um, wipe the leaves off of the water. And then that'll also get rid of uh, anything that's got left behind from the blast of water. I can easily just kind of wipe it off. So stay tuned and uh, I'll come right back with um, the application of the neem oil. All right, so I went ahead, wiped off my plant. Didn't take long at all. Very pretty. So glad to see it to its original shine. It's all the dust. They got a construction site going on over here. They're building a car wash. And so all the dirt that they've been moving around with the big uh, heavy machinery has just been blowing all over the place. Plus we had a few fires going on back uh, uh, miles and miles back this way behind you. And uh, that smoke has come across and I'm pretty sure it's coated everything. So not only did I get dust off, the, the spider mite webs off, I got some of the dust off as well. So back to its original luster. But now, now we need to go ahead and prevent um, the spider mite from coming back. And then also uh, killing any eggs that were laid in the process. So, with the neem oil, it says, if I can get it open here. So, because it was, they were already uh, infiltrated and infested the plant. This is a what they call a um, what do they call it here? It's not a preventative. It is because there it's control to control it's already on the plant so this is now to control the diseases or the uh, infestation so this is on a seven day schedule so every seven days me I probably do every six days uh, come back and spray the plant completely that's what they want you to do they want you to pretty much drench it until it is wet and we all know what wet looks like. Those are droplets. And you, it's, it's, it's okay for the plant because it's, it's all natural. Neem oil is an extract out of a neem tree. So it's all natural. It's not going to harm the plant bad at all. Um, there are a few plants that it, it does specify not to use this on. But it's up to you to read the directions and make sure you got the right kind. So for this plant, every uh, seven days, I'm going to do six. And then it also says a, a half a teaspoon for uh, one quart. Um, I'm not going to go out and get a, a, a teaspoon and, and, and measure it. I'm not going to do all that. I'm just going to use my 24-ounce um, mister right here. And I'm just going to put a cap full of the neem oil inside of just one cap full. So let's do this real quick. Uh, I'm so glad I looked at it because my plant, I really just don't appreciate these insects and bugs coming and destroying my hard work. You know, it, it's a lot of sweat and tears have gone into this plant and into this garden. And I will not let a pesky little spider mite and his buddies come in and uh, kill my plant. Wow, this stuff smells kind of like a mixture between lemons and motor oil. <laughs> so I'm just going to pour that in there just like that. Wow, look at that. It even has the, uh, the murkiness of lemon. Put the cap back on that. Now, I've heard one time before that, uh, that because it is an oil... It was somebody had a hard time getting the oil up into the, the nozzle to sp all shook it up. Let's go ahead and drench this thing. So I'm going to put it on 
a nice little spray and it is coming out and it just says spray until completely wet and what I'm gonna do is exactly that and I'm gonna make sure I spray down inside the actual uh, inside of there because that's where they like to spray I will also want to spray at the junctions of the leaf because that's where they like to nest and and lay their eggs so I'm just gonna spray as if you were misting your plant inside to give it a little bit of water get down inside of there and it says every six days uh, seven days and like I said I'm probably gonna come out here again every six days and do it um, and then most importantly get underneath the plant as well get underneath the get the underside the leaves this stuff it stinks it, it, it doesn't smell that great um, like I said it the lemon the lemon smell is kind of going away and now it's just kind of smelling like uh, lubricant if you don't know what lubricant smells like uh, go and uh, don't go and stick your nose in that stuff I worked at a car bumper plant many many years ago and all day long you smelled like lubricant. You went home, you smelled like machine oil lubricant. And then I also have these little baby ones down here. I'm going to spray that. Now, I don't know about the soil, but shoot. Well, that's it. I'm very happy with that. That was a fairly easy, simple process. I'm, I'm actually quite pleased and uh, the plant looks better you know so I guess I'll come out here again in about uh, six to seven days and reapply the neem oil I don't know it smells like a plastic plant now <laughs> but it's all natural right but it looks a lot better and I think what I'm going to do it's just for preventative maintenance. I'm gonna spray some of my other plants as well because uh, I have a croton plant here that looks like it could use neem oil. It's not, it wasn't nearly, well, it is not nearly as bad as this was. I mean, I, you've seen the video, you've seen them crawling on there. Ugh. So I'll spray my, uh, my croton plant down with that. Otherwise, my other plants are doing fairly well. Um, but I'm actually glad that I went ahead and bought it because when it does get cold outside, this is something that if anybody wants to do, you're going to have to treat your plants when you bring them inside. You can't just bring your in, your plants from outside and bring them right inside. What happens is there's, there's insects in the soil, there's little critters, there might be worms, there's spider mites, aphids. You bring all that outside insects and you bring them indoors and you change their environment and um, you could really do a lot of harm to your plants so the best thing to do is actually spray them down with a neem oil or some type of other um, pesticide that's organic and that's not going to harm your plants you want to do that before you bring any plant indoors so if it gets cold in your area and you have tropical plants even uh, vegetables and fruits spray them down with neem oil it'll do the job so you can uh, bring your plants indoors well that's it I do appreciate you guys for tuning in and watching me go through this simple fairly easy process um, it's simple for you guys to watch but it's not for me because I have to move the camera I have to reposition the plants I gotta do this and that all the good stuff that you guys get to just miss out on other than that like I said thanks again for watching Stay tuned for episode nine. I got some potato plants, excuse me, tomato plants growing 
uh, actually the seedlings I got them going right now and we're gonna be planting those soon so stay tuned we got tomatoes coming up and um, I got some good stuff for the upcoming fall season stay tuned to the green journal entries thanks for watching I'm your host Aaron Paulson go ahead and subscribe hit that notification if you want to see new videos coming out see you later